All right, we are continuing with our spot illustration project, assignment five, using freeware as much as possible. And where we left off was filling in all the shapes behind our line art for flat coloring. So if I open up my folder, in my assignment five folder, I want to find my PSD file that I'm working on within PhotoP. And I want to open up PhotoP. And I want to drag that PSD file into it. And there you can see the flat color that we're dropping behind our line art. And we have the option of making our line art as a vector, which was very helpful because it makes it perfectly clean at any scale. Right? So before we do a whole lot of coloring, especially before we move beyond just flat coloring, you want to check your image resolution. So go to image, image size, and you want it to be in inches, at least 10 by 10 inches. What I recommend is more like 11 by 14 by 350 pixels per inch. And mine is that. So that means any of this coloring I create is going to be at high enough resolution to use for our posters. Even though it can, <laughs> it can cause things to glitch sometimes. Like it just did because we're working at high resolution. So because we're doing that, let's close any tabs we don't need open. And really the only one I need open is our Canvas homepage. And I'm going to move from there to assignments. We're in unit 11 but I can also do this through assignments and I'm going to go right to where we post and this is what we've posted or I've posted so far as we've demonstrated it we're illustrating the phrase suffer no fools I first started with a concept sketch that I refined we made clean black line art whether it's at high resolution or whether it's a vector or both and now we want to add our full color solution. So I don't know why this is glitching, but I'm going to reopen it. I checked its size. It was the right size. So now just look at your layers. You should have a black line art layer. I find it very helpful especially at this stage, to have an inspiration kind of color palette layer. So I have that here. And then on the bottom, you're going to have a white layer. I also said it was helpful to add a background layer that was middle gray and a background layer that was black. And that's going to come into play as we keep coloring. And we recorded all those steps. We spend a lot of time getting our line art. So this is where we're, we're next. Now what I mentioned is the hardest thing about digital coloring is picking the right colors for your flat colors. And so I didn't have to have you watch me choose colors. I worked on it this weekend and I chose these flat colors, you know, from my inspiration and kind of altering them a little bit. So I want to show you how you can alter your flat colors to be what you want. In addition, you don't need to stick to only the colors, to only coloring things that are fully contained. So let me demonstrate. If I want to color in this part with a different color, I just have to, now that it's all colored, I got rid of the whites first. Now what I do is I pick the color I want. Let's say I want to color it in first with this orange. And I just use my brush. I'm going to set my brush setting. Should be its default setting anyway. To being 100% hardness. Normal mode, opacity 100%. I'm going to make it pressure sensitive with my tablet. And then with this new color that I use option to steal. This kind of golden yellow. problem I have with photo P sometimes. 
I lose my cursor. I'm just going to paint across. I have to be on my flat color layer. Come on. There we go. And then have to just connect the lines. So what that does is it separates this purple from this purple. And so then I can use my paint bucket, which you'll find with the gradient tool, and I can just swap out that color now, which was before connected to the purples. Because I just feel like there's too much purple. Right? Same thing with the top here. If I want to clean that up, let me turn on my black line art so you can see. If I want this top area to be a different fill color, I can just go in with my brush and I just have to connect from black line to black line. And it's underneath the black line, so it's not going to matter. And then I can use my paint bucket. I just want to make sure I close all the openings. Yeah, I think that's all the openings for that. Oh, no, right here. Oh, no, that's good because it's already filled in with purple. All right, so now I just drop it in. And I get a different color for that section. Same thing for, I'll do this one last time, then I'll show you the colors I selected. So the first task is to kind of divvy up your flat colors where they aren't contained and make the contained shapes you want. And once you have that, it's easy to swap them out for different colors. This one's a little trickier. I'm going to use, let's use a different color that's really noticeable. Let's use a red, I have a pink, pinkish red. If I wanted to enclose this eye, this is about as complicated as it gets. I connect black line to black line to contain it. Okay, and then I can use this to fill those in. So what does that look like on my flat color? It looks like that, almost stitched between, you know, these different sections. But now that I have that with flat color, I can swap all those colors for whatever I want. Kind of fill them all in in different ways. Until I eventually get to my finished flat color. Now we're using the metaphor of a sandwich. And my finished flat color, I can even just create some extra flats. I just did that with my brush tool. And I did little dots where I thought I needed them. Notice they're not outlined. They're not part of the line art. They're just additional little designs. Right? And then I can put stuff on top of them if I want. Okay, so let's fill it in. So now I've got my flat color with my additional little dots. So I'll, I'll turn off the effects on those. If you want to, you can leave in these transitions like that purple there, or you can simply make a choice in your flat color layer with whether you want it to be one or the other. You know, that's the blue, or this would be with the red. I think I like the red better. There. And then we're going to move on. So, so far, let's see how those flat colors look on gray. Let's see how those flat colors look on black. And I only divided them up into new colors where I thought I needed it. Like I thought I needed a little tongue 
groove in the middle. So I, I just drew that and filled it. So now this gets into what's called duotone color. So I'm going to save my work, just Command S, and it's going to save to the folder I pulled it from. So you'll see that change. Now remember, if we go to the assignment page from the home page in the class, you'll see lots of extra resources showing you all these kind of variations of coloring. And not just my doing it, because you'll see lots of my past tutorials on the YouTube and in the class, but also the mentorship presentations from Digital Honors students who have gone through this and sharing their tips and tricks. So I've added that all here. Not only my exhaustive explanation of digital coloring, but also my uh, Mason's mentorship presentation on digital inking, Noemi's presentation on coloring basics, sketch to duotone. So I'm going to just refer back to that so that we can see what this next step is, going from flat color to tones because she put it very well so we have our line art and then you put in your flat base color the color the thing would be no matter the lighting condition like charlie brown's shirt this is called local color as well it's flat because it's all one pixel color now do a tone, you can see how that adds dimension. So just within this illustration, you can see where the do a tone is. In the fox, you'll see the fox's red fur. With do a tone, it has a shadow tone underneath the tail at the side of the head. On the turtle, underneath the head, you have a nice clean edged, hard edged do a tone. And then on the eagle, which is kind of the most fun to see this color change, we have a very reflective beak, and that reflective beak has duotone, which has both the shadow variation of the flat color, but also a highlight variation. We also see duotone on the wing here. This is the flat color, and that's the duotone, which shows a highlight variation, a shadow variation, but has a soft-edged gradation between the two. So that's soft-edged duotone. What duotone does not do is add new colors. It just adds lights and darks to your existing flat color. So let's look at the ways we can do that within Photo P. Here's my flat color. What I can do is make a duplicate of it, Command J, of just my flat color. I'll keep it on the white background just so it's not confusing. And instead of choosing brand new colors, I don't need my color reference on right now because I've already selected all my colors and filled in all my white. Now I make a duplicate of my flat colors. And because I did multiple layers of flat color, I'm going to merge that duplicate group. Now I'm going to lock my flat colors underneath so I don't accidentally disturb them. And I'm going to rename this duotone. And this is going to be hard edge. So we want to get used to this vocabulary. Now there's lots of ways I can do this, but a really simple way, I'll do it on gray, I guess, so you can see, is I'm going to take these flat colors that I duplicated and I'm going to go up to Image Adjustment Levels. And I can darken the whole thing if I want, or I can lighten the whole thing. And what's great about using levels here, levels is not a color tool. Levels is just a lightness darkness tool. This is basically adding white, adding highlights to all of my colors. But you see the greens are still greens, the oranges are still oranges, the reds are still reds. They're just kind of pastel versions of them. Or I can go the other way and just make them darker and darker. Right? So adjustments can do your duotones for you. This is a way I think looks really good. I can use my lasso tool with a zero pixel feather. This will be hard edge duotone. And what I can do 
is 